From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. Good evening, folks. This is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. This evening, I want to talk a few minutes about the Cushing disease and the Cushing disease syndrome. They refer to over production of cortisol due to any cause it could be adrenal hyperplasia or exogenous cortisol use. Cushing disease is more specific term that refers to excessive cortisol resulting from excessive ACTH production by pituitary corticotropic tumors. So ACTH producing tumors they account for 80% of the Cushing syndrome. So ACTH producing tumors account for 80% of Cushing syndrome. That's an important point folks. The remaining 20% are due to adrenal tumors such as adenomas or carcinomas or uh, micronodular or macronodular hyperplasia associated with the production of glucocorticoids. Cushing syndrome is uh, rare with uh, a prevalence of about 10 people per a million people. And Cushing disease is more prevalent in women than in men, whereas ectopic ACTH production is more common in men because in men we have a higher incidence of bronchogenic carcinoma that could produce ACTH. So you see Cushing syndrome is more prevalent in women whereas exogenous ectopic ACTH production is more common in men because of the higher incidence of bronchogenic carcinoma in these patients. Now clinical features, signs and symptoms, I mean they teach these things since first year in medical school the moon faces and the central obesity, the weight gain and the thickening of the facial fat and because of the thickening of the facial fat the patients get uh, a moon faces and uh, it's also accompanied by thickening of the fat in other areas of the body so moon faces is an important word we need to remember and some of these patients develop uh, uh, enlarged fat that is called a buffalo hump. They could develop glucose intolerance, oligomenorrhea and amenorrhea in premenopausal women. They could develop decreased libido and uh, ecchymosis and also telangiectasia. So those are the most important you see. Uh, in general they develop obesity, proximal muscle weakness, hypertension, they can also develop psychiatric problems and skin problems like uh, hyperpigmentation and uh, they could develop acne, hirsutism and uh, fungal skin infections and they could also develop endocrine and metabolic problems like hypokalemia and uh, hyperkalemia. Uh, Those are the problems and sometimes they are present uh, with uh, 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 things like uh, acne many times that could be the presenting problem. Now laboratory findings you might see an elevated white blood cell count, an elevated glucocorticoid level and uh, the confirmatory test is to see for the source of cortisol. So excessive glucocorticoid production you can do a 24 hour urine free cortisol level and overnight dexamethasone suppression test. So those are the important tests you need to do in order to confirm the diagnosis. So a 24 hour urinary free cortisol test an overnight dexamethasone suppression test and there is another test called midnight cortisol level determination but one milligram uh, dexamethasone suppression test has been the screening test of choice in these patients. So you say you most of the times you need to have uh, an eye of suspicion. Patient is uh, complaining of fatigue and weakness and acne. You need to think about Cushing syndrome and then you need to go for the test like a uh, uh, 1mg dexamethasone suppression test and a free urine cortisol test because of the low specificity of dexamethasone suppression test. 
So when you do these tests, you are uh, most likely to find this problem. Then the other problem is like once you find the diagnosis, you need to locate the tumor. You can do an MRI to see uh, the adrenal glands and the, how they are doing. You can do um, a C, uh, sorry MRI for the brain. You can to see the pituitary tumor and the CT scan in the abdomen to see whether any of the adrenal gland tumors are developing. So MRI and CT are helpful in that manner. When it's come to uh, 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 treatment, let me tell you a few things. Just common sense. If it's a pituitary tumor, do go for a surgery like transplenoidal, microadenal, mectomy. So it's a pituitary tumor, you go for a transplenoidal, microadenal, mectomy. And the other thing is, if in patients who are not uh, suitable for surgery, if uh, in, for example, in the patients who wants uh, childbearing, like they want to become pregnant, they cannot remove their pituitary. In those cases, you need to do pituitary irradiation. Right, folks? Very simple. If the tumor is there, it is resectable, go for surgery, like transplenoidal uh, surgery. And if the patient wants childbearing, pituitary radiation. The other thing is, if you can't do surgery, pituitary irradiation. And uh, if uh, same with the adrenal glands, if the adrenal glands need to remove total surgery, total adrenalectomy. So you see, uh, the treatment depends based on the presentation of the patient. Tumors are resectable, surgery. If they're not, then go for irradiation. But unfortunately, like in the bronchogenic carcinoma, where, like, uh, you know, paradoxical, like, uh, uh, when these uh, hormones are produced, the paraneoplastic syndrome, ACTH producing bronchogenic carcinoma, what is the treatment here? I mean, there's not much to do because already the patient might have been in his terminal stages by the time he developed uh, paraneoplastic syndrome ACTH producing uh, uh, disease from bronchogenic carcinoma. In such a patient, all you got to offer is um, supportive palliative treatment. You can't do surgery. And irradiation not much helpful because it's a paraneoplastic syndrome. So you see the treatment is always uh, uh, geared towards uh, uh, patient's uh, comfort level and the patient's uh, preference and uh, the size of the tumor. So those are the most important uh, things I wanted to share with you this evening. So basically Cushing syndrome and Cushing disease, they are common things due to excessive cortisol production. And uh, symptoms, remember those names, moon faces, buffalo hump, those are the names you need to remember. Then uh, coming to treatment, you need to do, uh, remember transplenoidal uh, surgery, then pituitary irradiation, then palliative treatment. Hopefully that got uh, some important points for you to start your study with and if you have any more important points please feel free to post them on the website we have thanks for listening for more medical videos please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site if you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.